Hello, Andy. Welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me on this one. Hey, Ray. Glad to be here, and I'm glad you wanted to talk to me. Yeah, definitely. Um, Andy, how long have you been doing photography? Well, I got a DSLR in 2010, and it spent way too much time on auto with that. Okay. And I'd say about four years ago, I decided to get serious and made a New Year's resolution that I was going to take five pictures a week, no matter nice. what they were. And next thing I knew, I was downloading like 250 a week. Yeah. Now that's a lot of trash, but yeah, sure. And I was still shooting <laughs> auto for a while. And okay. like two years ago, it's like, all right, I got to take the training wheels off. Gotcha. And it's been downhill ever since. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's awesome, man. Um, <clears throat> is wildlife your main focus or are you just kind of, I mean, looking through your feed here, it looks like you kind of just like nature in general and variety of stuff there. Nature in general, wildlife, okay. sometimes it's a slow day and I'm like seeing nothing that's catching me and I start looking at the trees, Happens plants, to all of us. you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I try to, spread it out a little bit i actually started doing far garden photography oh cool because as a hobby i read i write articles and i was doing my own photography which ah. you know sometimes it ends up being really formula and okay. you're taking the same kind of shots mm -hmm. and then i was like you know what i'm gonna just start shooting whatever and yeah birds caught my attention and you know that's that's how that started nice man excellent yeah um, that's one of the nice things about nature photography, right? Even when you do go out, especially if you're looking for wildlife and you don't find anything so many times you can just kind of, you know, veer into something there, there's else something. in nature. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like those long stretches in August when everything's getting ready to migrate, nothing's moving and you know, yep. there's, there's bugs, there's yeah, totally. uh, seed heads, there's flowers, something. Yeah. 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 That's great. That's great. All right. You ready to get to it? Sure. All right. You picked five photos. I picked five photos. Let's check them out. We'll start with one of the first ones you chose. And wow, what a stunner, man. Um, incredible silhouette. And I got to say, you know, the first thing that jumped out to me is uh, I don't see silhouettes of hummingbirds that often. You know, that's not a commonly silhouetted subject. And right. on top of that, having such a, a flower with like incredible character here. Uh, is really cool and then you know the color back there is just beautiful at either i'm guessing sunset um or sunrise either way but uh i'm figuring sunset yeah that would be my guess um but yeah this uh just incredible uh silhouette shot here so uh, a lot of things to really like about it and the, you know what I, I also really stands out to me is it's nice and vivid color back there but it's not that like crazy oversaturated anything too you know so it's just right. it's like nice and kind of subtle but rich tones back there um yeah yeah really cool shot man yeah, yeah i really liked it because like you said it's not the usual hummingbird shot it's yeah. you know it's really nice silhouette i love the fact you can see through the wings i, yeah, I really cool. like that and i'm I just, it really popped, really jumped yeah. out at me. Yeah. Yeah. It really did. So, uh, very excellent first choice there. All right. You ready for the next one? Here's one for you. Sure. All right. Barn owl or short eared? Barn owl. Looks like a barn. Yep. Barn. Yep. Yeah. Really nice action shot. Uh, I always like when I can catch them in the act. Yeah. That's right? really nice. The bird's yeah. really crisp. The background is really soft. I really like that. Yeah. And I like the way the bird is so bright against the dark section of the background. Totally. That's the one thing that stood out to me when I kind of was just scrolling through. It just jumped out at me because of that, you know? Right. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, it's not easy to get that all the time when you get a light colored bird on a mostly dark background like that, uh, or at least, mm -hmm. you know, that bird could have easily flown up into the orange and maybe, you know, while I think that orange is a nice accent up top, uh, it maybe wouldn't have stood out as much if it was kind of mixed up with that, you know what I mean? Whereas right Yeah, now, it really just, needs a contrast, I think. Totally, totally, man. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, ain't it the best when the wildlife works out like that? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Cool. All right. Let's keep it going. Okay. Oh, man. <clears throat> Look at the mood on this one. Dude, fog is Absolutely. so fun and so challenging to shoot in, too. Um, 
I really love just the uh, the atmosphere here. That kind of connection between the two uh, the two animals there, the two elk, is really nice. Instead mm-hmm. of just having it be like a one one off portrait, you know, uh, having the second one right. there definitely tells a little bit of more of a story. Uh, the interaction between them, um, seeing it was September in uh, in PA there, uh, obviously probably the rut. So that that bull is probably chasing the cow, is my guess. Um, yeah, it would be my guess too. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just a uh, really nice mood. And it's, it's a nice mix of, I can see the shape of these elk and I can even see like a little bit of kind of tone and uh, detail in the bull there a little bit. Uh, but it's not, yeah. so it's not so contrasty that I, you lose the fog and it's not so foggy that you can't really see the animals. And I find for me anyway, when I'm shooting fog, that's like the biggest trick, even in post-processing, like how much mm-hmm. do I crank the contrast on this and make the subject like visible, but still make it look foggy. You know, have you ever struggled with that? I haven't had enough opportunity to play with fog. Okay. Um, most of my shooting is on my way home from work and gotcha. you know, I work, I won't say a nine to five, but a daylight job. So most yeah. of the time I don't get fog. Gotcha. I mean, there's a few chances, but a lot of times it's just like a few wisps rising off of the water. Mm. I, I'd yeah. love to have more opportunity, but it, it just hasn't happened. Yeah. You know what? I'm a morning shooter predominantly, and I still don't shoot in fog that often either. I mean, it just doesn't, you know, in our area anyway, uh, in my area in Southern New Jersey, it's not yeah. real common. I mean, it certainly happens. If, there's definitely a few times every year I'm out in fog, but um, it's not yeah. like I live in one of those areas where, you know, every other day. And, and I've never been out to uh, this area in PA where the uh, elk are, but I've heard from many photographers that it's such a common thing that I guess just the, the location and the weather conditions, at least in the fall. Yeah, it's a mountainous area. You get a lot of pockets. Yep. Um, I have gotten a few landscape shots with fog. Okay. A few worked. A few were super frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's like, fine. Yeah, I, 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 I see a gray smudge with a lighter gray background. Great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know what? Fog landscape's really tough because you're dealing with a lot more mm-hmm. space, layers. It's got to be just the right amount and just the right places for it to kind of work out. Yeah. And you have to have a thin fog, too. If it's too heavy, you don't get what you want. It's just a whiteout at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's kind of like shooting snow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Definitely. Well, uh, yeah, another nice choice, man. Really, really like the atmosphere and the mood of this shot. Um, and yeah, that's that's what got my attention. It's really somber, really moody. I really liked it a lot. Yeah. And one last thing I know. Well, two last things, actually. I love just the subtle nature of a little bit of the um, the feel that it's in showing down here. And then I mm-hmm. also really like the, the head angle on this uh, bull with the antlers showing just the way they are so they're separated yeah. but on an angle so they're not like uh, each side isn't tangled up in with itself and it's not a head-on shot so you actually get to see the shape of the head of the bull so it's like the perfect head yeah. angle to really show off that species that is a really nice angle yeah all right cool let's go to the next one okay oh wow <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like he's saying what yeah, right are you talking to me? <laughs> totally. So much personality in this thing. Yeah, that that's nice. He, he's really, he's intently watching you while yeah. you're getting the shot. Yep. Now, I love the way the whiskers stand out against that background. That's, Lighting that's something be much that better, can right? get lost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wow, I can only imagine how long you waited for that shot. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, what's he say? The stoat was quite curious and came close to check him out. Uh, there was another big rock in the background, which created the dark background. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, this photographer, amazing photographer. I followed him for a long time. Young guy uh, mm-hmm. and just one of these, you know, just incredibly creative uh, young photographers that's doing a lot of great mm-hmm. stuff um, over in Europe. Uh, I don't know. This one says it's Switzerland, so I don't know if that's just this photo because I don't think I don't know if he's based out of there or not. Uh, I forget off the top of my head. I follow, you follow so many people online. It's hard to keep track of where everybody's from, you know? I mean, that's one of the cool things about Instagram, right? You get to see the photos from Mm -hmm. all over the world. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I really love, I mean, immediately, number one, this thing is cute. It's adorable. The eye contact and the expression, just like you said right in the beginning, it's like, you just got that expression to it, right? Um, Yeah. Secondarily, right? 
uh, really nice light, just killer light in the eyes, like these huge catch yeah. lights, which kind of exaggerate so the crisp. size of these eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, obviously, the dark background is completely non-distracting. And then these little splashes of green up here just kind of add a mm -hmm. little color to the shot. So, uh, yeah. And the vertical yeah, really composition, nice. I think, works. Yeah, yeah awesome. absolutely. All right. Let's move it along. Next one. Okay. Oh, look at that crayfish catch in there. <laughs> nice. That's really cool, man. Yeah. It's amazing what these birds will eat. Uh, mm -hmm. these, these yellow crown night herons and the black crown. I mean, basically any wading bird, uh, but especially any these heron. night herons. Yeah. These guys. I, I've seen one eat a rat. Did you really? Believe it or not. Which yeah. kind of heron did you see that? I'm guessing great That was blue? a great blue. Yeah, that would be yeah. my guess. Yeah. yeah. I got some shots. They weren't what I was hoping for, but you know. Okay. Nice. Um, killer light on this. Lovely low perspective. Feels like you're in the water with the bird. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, Tracy, amazing photographer. Uh, really nice light on this. And then, I mean, of course, having it like midair with the crayfish, you can really see the prey like that is uh, yeah. you know, just like, come on, how, how do you get any better than that? You know? Um, yeah. Have you photographed this species yourself uh, much in the past? <sighs> it's funny. I had, I found out this year that there is a rookery in a nearby town. Nice. It is literally right on the edge of the Ephrata Community Hospital parking lot. Oh, I've heard of that one. And you walk up to the edge of the parking lot, you look up into these pine trees, and they're, they're right there. Yeah. They're flying in with sticks. They're feeding their chicks. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it feels like cheating after all the <laughs> frustration I went through to get my first green heron. Yeah. I walk up to the night herons, and they're right there. It's yep. Like, really? Yeah. And granted the angle wasn't the greatest because it was shooting up at them gotcha. but you know i got a couple of trophy shots which first time you see a species you want to get that trophy and then it's like okay now what can i do how can you make it better uh, right yeah right right yeah. absolutely i think every wildlife photographer i know i certainly can can relate to that right just uh the first time you mm -hmm. see a species the only thing in my mind is like oh, just get the shot is it in focus like good exposure okay and you yeah. just it's amazing. Still to this day, you know, I've been doing wildlife photography for 15 years, photography for a living for over 20 years now. And still to this day, when I see a new species, uh, everything, all, all my like training and thought of creative and good photography is just gone out the window. Yeah. And I'm just immediately, I'm just back to like a total beginner of just like uh, point and shoot, you know? Um, yeah. And how many of those shots turned into Loch Ness shots? Yeah, it's like, okay, exactly. yeah, I kind of can see what it is, yep. but you know, it's grainy, yep. it's blurry. Oh, yeah. it's relieving itself. Wonderful. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's very rare to me for my experience that the first time I ever see a species, I walk away with like an amazing photo. It has happened. Oh uh, yeah. It's, it's not common. And so when it does happen, man, does that make it even more special? You know, what I find weird is you'll be looking for something, you know, someone will say, Oh, this is here or that's there. And you're like, okay, I'm going back day after day, nothing, nothing, nothing. Yeah. There it is. And then a month and a half of nothing but opportunities. Yeah. It's like, how did this go from being super rare to tripping over it? And then <laughs> yeah, it's gone totally. for a while. <laughs> yep. Yep. That is the way it seems to work sometimes. It sure is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, great pick again. Yeah, I always there like those action shots. Oh, nice spoonbill. Isn't it? Good color, good definition on the wings. I like that. Yeah. And I can only imagine that he's squawking at a, uh, either a mate or a challenger or something. That's nice. Yeah. I like the leading lines of the branch and everything. Yeah, that branch is really cool, isn't it? Mm-hmm. A lot of character to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Vance is a great photographer. He's actually uh, he's going to be on the uh, the Wildlife Photo Chat podcast in uh, in the near future. Um, but yeah, this one stood out to me. Yeah, I've seen a lot of spoonbill photos, and he's got some real, other really good ones, like right down here, you know. But oh, yeah, 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 the combination of everything you just pointed out, wing position, that that bit of action, like you were just talking about in the last photo, and how you like that. Mm -hmm. um, great light and then that perch like i've i don't think i've ever seen spoonbills on such a nice perch i mean i'm sure there are out there i just haven't seen a lot of them that way so yeah that, yeah. that perch and super dark background which works really good for that lighter and more colorful bird right it really makes it pop yeah um 
So yeah, yeah he definitely had, does. He had it all come together right there, man. Yeah. So. Yeah, that that's sweet. I'm definitely jealous of that spoonbill shot because the spot. Oh I, yeah. Uh, I shoot them in down in Florida. They don't ever. There's no setup that I could get anything like this, you know. Yeah. Right. Not unless I want to go swimming with the gators to get out there, and I do not. <laughs> Oh, come on now. You might get some good gator shots. Even I have my limits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think I'd be hard-pressed for that one, too. I have a little side note here. I'm going to just tell this story. I had a friend. Um, he's still a friend. He still exists. I said had like he's gone or something. And <laughs> after I tell the story, gators, I shouldn't yeah. say had. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I say had because he's no longer doing wildlife photography. Um, okay. So he's moved out of that. But uh he went down to Florida one time and he was, he, he did a lot of variety of ph- wildlife photography. And the last bit that he did, he got into underwater photography. And so he was down there one day and he's messaging me and a couple of other friends on this group chat while he's down there, he's down there by himself, uh, this is yep. like 10 years ago, something like that. And he's like, I really want a photo. Like he wanted an underwater photo of gators, um, down in Florida. And so he's like, you know, I've seen really good photos. I want, I want to get one myself. And so he messaging us. He's like, all right, I found some, but I, it's just, I don't know if I'm going to get in the water. It's really, it's a little nerve wracking because it's just him. Nobody else. Yeah. He's got like, I don't know. He said like a 10 or 11 foot gator in front of him. Oh, hello. And, yeah. yeah. And he's questioning whether he should get in the water with it or not. And yeah, that's turned, an easy he, answer. No, <laughs> he did. He, he ended up getting oh, in wow. there. And then, and then he messaged us back. He was all upset afterwards. Cause he's like, shit man the thing left you know like it was it's, he scared it away that's what he was pissed about that he wasn't able to get close enough to get like the wide angle underwater shot that he wanted i'm like dude you oh, are geez. insane like that is so far beyond anything i would ever do uh yeah, but right. yeah it was that that story will stick in my mind forever because i'm just like wow man some people will go uh, all in like that you know certainly not saying it's the wisest thing but uh thankfully he yeah. was fine and, uh, you know, he did get some shots of them, but just not as close as he wanted. So. <laughs> In a similar, similar vein, the uh, one wildlife reserve near my house where I do a lot of my shooting, Middle Creek. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine posted on Facebook this picture she took yesterday, I think it was. There is a very photogenic red-tailed hawk okay. that likes to hang out on the fence posts running along the, the road. Yeah. She didn't take a picture of the hawk. She took a picture of the idiot laying in the middle of the road to get the shot of the hawk behind a friend of hers. Oh. Oh, there was a spotter on the road, but no, no, you don't lay in the middle of the road to get a shot when there's a hill on either side of you. That's a little Blind bit of a spot anyone? Yeah, right? Yeah. Right? Jeez. I think we and probably I mean, all... Her head was on the double yellow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was just so going to say, I think we've all... In the road probably done something that like in hindsight you look back and you're just like yeah maybe shouldn't have what done was that I thinking? yeah yeah and i'll actually share one of those stories uh on my uh my show coming up where uh me and jamin taylor talk about my trip to alaska with him uh i have okay. one of those stories where i kind of after the after the moment was done i looked back and i was like oh i can't believe i did that like <laughs> but involved anyway. the bear didn't it it did not actually. No, it oh, did it not. Did not. Oh, yeah, no. Okay. I, when I was around the bears, it was my first time around bears. My, I was always yeah. like, yeah, I was, I was very respectful and just not, not taking any chances there. So, yeah. anyway, <laughs> we're going all over the place. I love the conversation. Though. This is kind of exactly what I wanted the show to be. It's like you see a photo, you talk about it, and then it kind of leads to yeah. other stories and stuff. Right. Um, nice choice here with my man Brad James. Uh, he's mm-hmm. such a good photographer, and uh, wow beautiful black and white warbler on some spruce Mm -hmm. i'm guessing yep spruce um yeah yeah nice deep rich greens and really make the the striking plumage of that bird stand out um also kind of cool that it's color wise not texture wise but color wise totally monotone back there and i mean one color it's just all that deep green which really again right is not distracting at all really makes that black and white stand out and then and you you uh, still get texture in it you can see detail in in spots yeah yeah totally man and then the layers right the perch layer in Mm -hmm. focus the soft out of focus background so the bird stands out and then another layer up top back in focus again man uh just wow man yeah this really works well and then bonus singing you know (laughs) oh yeah absolutely yeah so 
all really, really good stuff on this one. Yeah, I really like it. I, I, I love the way the bird pops. Yeah. The, the, the background palette is just perfect to show it off, and you get a feel for where it is yeah. without the bird being like the size of a period in a corner. <laughs> I, I like wider shots, but there's a point that I'm like, okay, it's here somewhere, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. just me. Yeah. No, I'm sure I've posted some of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know what? The one problem, right? Instagram does not lend well to these, you know, oh, no, uh, more spacious no. compositions when the bird is really small. Um, but that is one of the things that I got to say, I personally love as I kind of find it a bigger challenge than the close up shot. Uh, of including so much more in the frame, making it all work together, yeah. just like Brad did here, right? You know, so this bird, I right. mean, if we if we pick a percentage of the entire photo that this bird takes up, what, maybe 10% of all the pixels? Maybe. Yeah. Something like that, right? So that's yeah. not much space. Yet, this bird is the star of the show. It stands out. Right. We know what our subject is. There's no question there. Everything else is secondary, but adds to the photo. So... Uh, for me, that's always the challenge of when you get these birds smaller in the frame, like how do you make all the other stuff in the photo work and still make right. the, bird the subject, you know? I'll be honest. I, I have trouble getting the wide shots. I just, I don't know. I'm never satisfied with them when I get done. And sometimes yeah. depending on how far I'm shooting, all I can get is a wide shot because it's just so far out there. Sure. Yep. And then I'm looking, well, how far can I crop in? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I almost, but it's fuzzy now. Now it's soft. Yeah, Never mind. Yeah, back it yeah. out. Yep. That's the uh, the balance we all play. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the lines on this one that are all crisp, even with the eye so small, it still punches. It does. That's nice. That's really crisp. Yeah. Yeah. And black and white warbler plumage is always just such a nice one to look at, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're fun you know, I've only at this. This is the first year I've ever seen a black and white in the wild. Oh, congrats. It's like, it, it's funny. People are like, oh, the warblers are coming in. And last year was like, oh, there's a palm. There's a yellow. Cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. where, where are people seeing all these? This year it was uh, black throated blue, a black nice. and white, um, common yellow throats everywhere, which sure. I'm sorry. I think common is an insult to them. They're anything but a common looking bird. I think they're awesome. Looking. Gorgeous. Yeah. And yeah. oh, saw the my first uh, yellow-breasted chat. And, oh, you know, very you cool. You think warbler, little okay. Yeah. And people were saying, I saw it here, I saw it there, I saw yeah. it here, and I could never find it. Okay. I thought it was a cuckoo when I saw it. Yeah, chunky. Bird. I thought it was some cuckoo that I didn't know what it was because it was uh -huh. so big. Yep. And I looked it up. Oh, that's the chat. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and I think that was cool. Within the last couple of years, they're no longer classified as a warbler. They've actually pulled it out of the warbler category, um, at oh, least really? on the ABA, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure that's uh, what they've done. But um, huh. yeah, don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% on that. But I think they took it. Okay. They, they, they moved it into another category. And uh, what they moved in with, I don't know. But it kind of makes sense when you see them <laughs> compared to every other they're warbler. They're so big. It's like, yeah. that's a warbler? Really? It is a little different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but maybe it just didn't fit into anything else. So they just chucked it in there back in the day. Who knows? Yeah, it could be. <laughs> uh, yeah. I still don't have Classifying a good Classifying is though. interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. It's like, wait yeah. a minute. You put this with that? A oh, lot of things make oh, sense, okay. but then some you're just kind of like, huh? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And like, the, the, kind of similar, but Wilson's uh, snipe and common snipe. Yeah. The Wilson snipe is the more common. Wait, what? Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Well, and then, yeah. you know, going back to the, the common yellow throat that you mentioned, um, while I think they are not real common and they're really striking looking, if you compare yeah. it to... The other one that's at least closely named, I don't, I wouldn't say they're close in um, kind of habitat or behavior or anything like that, but the yellow throated warbler, uh, yeah. they're, they're, the common yellow throat is way more common than those, you know, at least yeah. around my area, I should say, uh, right. other parts of the country that may be different. Um, but like yellow throated warblers um, are much tougher to find in my experience than the common okay. yellow throats, which uh, definitely common yellow throats like i can find them in the middle of the forest in some scrub habitat and then i can find them in the like in the salt marsh in the mm -hmm. freshwater marshes around the edges of lakes so like common yellow throats have such a wide variety of habitat and then yellow throated right. warblers for me are a very specific habitat um okay yeah just like in, in south jersey here there is just like 
one go-to habitat that you can pretty much go there and always find one. But as soon as you get away from that habitat, even just, you know, walk 50 yards out of that habitat, you're not finding them, you know? So they're like super isolated yeah. kind of thing. So it's kind of interesting how that so works. It's, it's almost like a Monty Python skit. They live only on the Southern branch of a North facing glob <laughs> pine growing by the interstate by the exit number three. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, it totally is kind of just like that. And it's kind of cool. This is the first year I figured that out. Um, I I've always kind of generally known what habitat to look for, mm -hmm. but this year I kind of, I spent so much time looking for them and some other species that I kind of realized like over and over again, I'm walking through the forest and it's like every time I get into this type of habitat, which is, um, swampy habitat with, uh, upland pines growing right next to it. As soon as you mm -hmm. had that right on that border, every, almost every single time, I could almost guarantee hearing a yellow-throated warbler singing in South okay. Jersey, you know, uh, which was yeah. pretty cool. And it got to the point of where I could just look on a satellite view of a whole new area I've never been to, no e-bird reports or any of that stuff. Just look at the satellite view, find some swampy area, go there, look for like that, that habitat, right, where the pines are on the edges yeah. of where it kind of gets low and swampy, and then boom, just like that over and over again, yellow throat, yellow throat yellow throat it was pretty neat wow yeah. cool yeah all right let's jump to the next photo all right oh Another yeah nice for you. yeah yeah i like the way the sun is shining off of it really gives it that nice warm glow yep uh you do have to work for it a little bit because it's not jumping out at you but totally. it's, it's definitely there and the reflections on the water help draw your attention to it too yeah definitely yeah, I could see I, that blown up on a wall. I was that just going to say, really nice, I think this is another nice one. Picture. If we do something like that, you know, just enlarge it more, it definitely gets, it, it's certainly yeah. not the best on Instagram, but um, yeah, man, I just, one of my favorite styles of lighting like that, that strong directional light coming in from the yeah. side uh, and then the nice dark background and full disclosure, uh, Derek was actually with me on my loon workshop when he shot this. Um, yeah, so, okay. Yeah, I was I was in the boat with him paddling him around as he was shooting this. Um, but it just popped up in my feed the other day and I didn't even mm -hmm. see his name at first. And I was just like, oh, man, this one's like really nice, you know. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, because he just shared it a day ago. Um, so he's just sharing some stuff from from back in the summer. But uh, I didn't even realize it was his at first. I was like, oh, this one's really nice. And then I saw his name. I was like, yeah. oh, OK, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. That is uh, nice. Yeah. And you're right. It definitely has to be enlarged. Then it comes into its own. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. But yeah, uh, I like that you pointed out the one thing, the, the second thing that really stood out to me too, which is that little wake line, right? Isn't that just like yeah. just the nice touch to kind of like draw Absolutely. you right into the bird there? Yeah. And it's so yeah. subtle. It leads you right to it. Yeah, but it's helpful. It really does. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And it kind of, it kind of helps give more of a sense of water because if without that like if you try to imagine that photo without it then it's just kind of a bird floating in a space of black you know and yeah sure we all will figure it out but that immediately just gives you that sense of water with the wake line there kind of thing so it gives you that boundary it tells you okay there's a reason for it being there it's not just floating <laughs> yeah, not exactly. just hovering yeah totally yeah all right i'm uh, anxious to see what we got coming up next oh look at that wood duck Oh, uh, Harry yeah. Collins. Nice. Yeah. He's always great with the wood ducks. Um, mm -hmm. This is definitely one of my favorites uh, of wood ducks that I've seen of his um, over the years. And I don't recall having seen this one before specifically until you chose it on this one. But uh, so many things I really like on this. Uh, number one, the light. Um, you know, so many people I think want to shoot wood ducks in just like real strong sunlight because they're like, oh, they're so colorful. But I do think in, in this circumstance, it really kind of uh, shows it that uh, the soft overcast light can really make those colors stand out. Too. Like these birds are colorful enough yeah. on their own. You don't need real strong light to make them pop. And not to say they don't look amazing in like great evening or morning sunlight, but um, right. I, I almost think overcast soft light like this is better than like you know, kind of overhead strong sun, uh, then it's almost right. like they're just too bright with everything. Um, so, so the, uh, the lighting I like the, that 
that kind of eye level perspective. And then the badass head on look is so great on a wood duck. They have, Oh uh, yeah. I mean the lines on their face automatically create some really good symmetry, the curves there. And then the white eye lines coming down the yellow on the shape of the bill there, like all that stuff is so good for a head on view. Uh, so to oh, be able to yeah. grab it like that and then have those bulging red eyes sticking out on either side is pretty sweet. So <laughs> yeah, definitely. A and great to catch the her. iridescence of the green on the cheeks, that is really sweet. The green, the blue, the purple, like there's that whole yeah. fade of rainbow of colors. I mean, what a bird, huh? Oh yeah. That, I, I think they're kind of a, it, it's hard for me to pick a spark bird because I've always been out in nature. Yeah. My mom used to say if she didn't know where I was, she had to look for the butterfly neck going over the reeds in the marsh. <laughs> but, <laughs> nice. But um, I love the colors of a wood duck. They, they just, they look so otherworldly. They don't look like a wild duck. You know, yeah. even though ducks are more colorful than most birds, yeah. these are like above and beyond. Oh, totally. Yep. Yeah, it was definitely. funny. I, I bought a wood duck decoy. First decoy I ever bought. Okay. And my wife said, that, that's not a real bird. And I said, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever shown a photo of one to a, like a friend that's not into birds at all and has never seen one? They, they really don't believe they're like, what, what is it? It's like a computer image or, you know, like, no, it's yeah, I, right. I photographed yeah. it like in PA or in Jersey, you know, and they're like, what? Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. They just do not believe it at all. Uh, which makes sense. I have, know? yeah, I have a couple of pictures of one now He's not in the home. Nope, oh, I lost it for a second there. You the broke up for a second. Can oh, you repeat okay. that? That's all right. I was driving home from work one day, and I was yeah. going past our local Home Depot, and there was a drain culvert right by the parking lot. Okay. And I saw this bird. I'm like, that's not a mallard. Yeah. Pulled back around, pulled into the parking lot and parked. Sure enough, Wood Duck Drake got nice. shots of him. Nice. At Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> classic uh, oh, yeah. well i don't i don't know where harry shot this one but uh there's a place i shoot them all the time in pa uh where it's so funny they're habituated to uh people because the locals there it's a popular spot for just everybody to visit you know people just go on hikes fishermen all kinds of stuff like that and so for Let years guess. they've fed them yeah yeah uh-huh but here's uh, the really guess. interesting Is it wildwood thing. park uh no actually yeah different spot oh, actually okay. yeah okay uh, but but here's the really interesting part about it is that yep. right where the people feed them, super habituated, they'll kind of swim right up to you, get some really good shots. But then if you walk downstream or upstream, uh, maybe 150, 200 yards, these same birds revert right back to wild, just like that. And wow. all of a sudden you can't get anywhere near them. They have huh. associated this area is safe with humans, but everywhere else still not. It's kind of amazing how that works. It's so That's crazy. Wild. Yeah. It's really amazing. Um, and huh. so, yeah, it's funny. I've, I've gone there to photograph the ducks and, and legit you're shooting them like headshots with 300 millimeter. And then I have yeah. also photographed them on my local pond here in Jersey. And I've had to be in total full camo, uh, silent mode on the shutter, barely any movement. And they're like, you know, looking at you and everything. It's like, yeah, what a difference, you know? Amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, right. they are really skittish if they're not used to. If totally. they're not used yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, waterfowl can be a challenge, but a fun one if uh, if they cooperate and work out for you. So, all yeah. right. We're up to the last okay. one here. I got, I got a last one for you. It's a good one, too. Check that out. Oh, nice. Nice silhouette. Real Isn't dramatic that? lighting. Yeah. That's nice. An Ibex. Wow. Yeah. That, that's a jealousy shot there. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. Another young guy. Um, this guy's from uh, Israel, uh, Ariel. Uh, really mm -hmm. creative photographer. He, he does a lot with silhouettes and just real dramatic light and stuff like that. And so, uh, uh, yeah, this photo when he shared, it's, yeah, from back in the summer, he shared this one. And I've just always been like, wow, on this one, man. It's like you said. That's nice jealousy shot you know uh, yeah great to have so, a such a great animal uh be a nice creative silhouette like that with some space but then mm -hmm. uh add into it that sky back there and it's oh, like oh wow on, that is... you know like, yeah yeah if it was this would have been a great shot with just a plain sky back there but that sky on top of it just really kind of takes mm -hmm. it to the next level 
And yeah, I don't know that's you... just begging to be black and white. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I don't know if you noticed, but like the cloud lines, I'm guessing because it's such a wide angle shot too, uh, they're all kind of like pointing leading in yeah right into there there's also little rays of light that are coming for obviously he's got the sun right here so the brightest yeah. part of the image right behind the head uh you know the the rock lines of the mountainside here all leading into the i mean so just everything is just bringing your attention right to the head and the that is a this. one shot yeah. deal Yep. Yeah, because as soon as it walks over here, right? Not the same, right? All the leading lines are yeah, behind right. it. If it's over here, then they're ahead of it. So yeah, he got it in like the spot right there to, yeah. to really just make all these things visually just kind of pull you right into that shot. So yeah. That is beautiful. Definitely if I tried right. something like that, I'd have like 25 shots of junk <laughs> because I, I would have missed the shot. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> well, that's why we keep going out and trying, right? yep yeah nice man that's wild excellent hey another show done excellent thank you so much Andy. yeah this was great hey no problem yeah it was really this nice was to, fun. this was a lot yes. of fun yeah i was just gonna say it was really nice to kind of you know so and so meet you here um yeah even though it's uh virtual but um yeah nice to get to chat with you and and hear your side of the stuff and really uh, uh appreciate and like the shots that you chose so uh thanks so much for doing that um great Andy, is uh, Instagram the best place for people to follow you? Actually, I do more on Facebook. Okay. Usually, I'll put up an album every week if I can get the timing to get it worked out, usually Saturday or Sunday. Okay, cool. And then I'll download the pictures that I want for Instagram, and I try to do one a day. Okay. But like right now, there's a huge hole because I was recovering from pneumonia, and I, oh, I just I was like, no, it's not happening. I don't yeah. feel it. <laughs> are you over it now yeah yeah i'm yeah good i'm pretty much on the upswing now good yeah no, well it's fun it. but yeah i'm sure yeah gosh yeah that sounds yeah. fun all right well i yeah. will be sure to point people to your facebook as well and uh thank you everyone for watching andy thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you guys on the next one sounds great thanks for having me you're welcome